I'm beating the squash vine board. Let me show you how. This Daryl Louisiana Simple Living. So for the last five or six years, the squash vine board has been a big nemesis. I put out a few videos on things that I do to try to prevent them from taking over, but we still got problems, especially with summer squash. So I've always planted my summer squash a week or two before the last frost. You can get away with that to try to get a jump start before the squash vine board comes out. Uh, he's already killed a couple of my summer squash, but there is one thing that all of us can do to beat the squash vine boar, or at least win the war. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, beating the squash vine boar. Maybe lose a few battles, but we're gonna win the war. Let's get started. I still go ahead and plant and grow summer squash. The problem is these squash vine boars, they really like them probably more than we do. So we figured out a way that we gotta try to get around it. So the, the fact, I've accepted the fact that my summer squash, some of that's gonna get really decimated by the squash vine boar. But there's another technique we can use. The trick is to go ahead and change what type of squash we're growing. We can still do some summer squash, but switch over a lot of your other ones to your Corcarpita muschata family of squash. They are natural resistant again because of the vines and how tough they are. And they're pretty hardy. They're doing fine, even though the squash vine borer has gotten into it a little bit. And that includes squash cultivars like uh, butternut, and there's a bunch of different kinds. I got a few, three or four kind out here. The Tromboncino, that's a particular one that's uh, had, a, had a lot of success against the squash vine borer. The Calabaza and the Cashaw, and Dickinson's and Long Island cheese types of pumpkins. Let me show you what I'm growing, and you can see what I'm doing to try to beat the squash vine boar. Again, he's won a few battles, but I'm going to win the war. Let's take a look. All right, this long slender squash I'm more excited about, and I'm real excited about, is the uh, squash Zucchino Rampicante. Plant is doing well. It had seen a little bit of a uh, squash vine boar uh, penetration at the base. But you look at it, this thing's growing good. There's another big one in here I'm going to get to and I'll show you. That thing's growing really well. All right, we got this big one in here. Let me go ahead and chop him down. All right, next up right here, I got a green bush zucchini squash. And you can tell looking at the roots that it's uh, been hit by a squash vine border pretty hard. Now I was able to get out here and I think I killed the one or two that were in it. You can tell the holes right there in the bottom, but a good, vibrant, robust plant continues on. So look, I got these two squash here and another one on the other side. Let's check them out. And then actually there's a fourth back here. I didn't even see it before. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest him. Four nice zucchini off of that one bush. Mm -hmm. All right, kind of over on this side. This is a there was the cattle panel I was at before, but this one right here. I got some smaller. Looks like maybe orange soca. Doesn't seem to be growing very good, but it is ripening. It's turning orange, so I'm gonna leave that one off. I got four, five of them. A couple more of those. One coming in back here. So these have been hit by squash vine borers, it looks like. Yep, definitely. But you still got fruit coming in, um, as I pointed out right here. Still got fruit coming in, so. Right now, I'm gonna say it survived. I did have it going in and tried to kill the uh, squash vine boar. Uh, the proof being the pudding. Another butternut back here. That's from one of the signs from all the way over there. I just gotta let it grow. Yep, see, there's another one here. So, even though they have got hit by the squash vine boar, they still produce. Yeah, and there's another butternut right there. Um, so, these vines are doing fine. Um, you got new growth coming on, so I'm going to leave even the smaller ones on and hope we get some good uh, production. 
There's just a couple of butter nut I went ahead and took off the vine. Look like the vine not gonna do too well anymore. I'm gonna leave the rest of them on. They look fine. There's new fruit coming on, new squash. And uh, we'll go from there. If you find this information valuable, do me a favor. Go ahead and subscribe, like that video. Feel free to share it and send in any comments or questions you may have in the description. Let's get back to beating the squash vine bore video. See, there's the Dickinson pumpkin right there. If you see, let me dig down to it. There's another one right there. Here's a Dickinson pumpkin. And that's the fourth Dickinson right there. You got some good uh, butternuts growing here. All right, this is a lemon squash, and it's actually doing pretty well. It's one of those ones you could put in. Um, it's It'll fruit and be ready probably in the latter 40, 50 days or so. And you'll be able to go in and harvest these. You just try to get it before the squash on board sees this particular bush, because it probably will attack it. But that's all part of the strategy. Do some things that take longer to grow. Do some things that are much shorter to grow. Try to get them ahead as fast as you can from the squash vine bore. That's all we can do. Cucumber. Yeah. Look how beautiful, green, long, slender. Yeah. All right, there we got four of them bad boys. No problem with squash vine bore with these cucumbers. And jumping on this side, I do have these um, homemade, I'm going to let that stay on, a homemade dill pickle type. The yellow one real fast, I'm, I need to make sure I get them off the vine before they start yellowing. All right, let me get the rest of those. All right, there's my cucumbers. That's the uh, homemade pickle. And this is the, I think it's Tokinawa Green Tokyo. Something like that. All right, and these two plants down there, they're not doing great. At least they're a little bit, little bit off color, but you follow it up. There's a birdhouse gourd right here. And then you see it shooting all the way across the top and more fruit coming in, so. All right, you can tell if you look at this particular plant, um, this is a Thai King Koa pumpkin. And you can tell it's been a uh, hit here. Probably, I don't remember if I came out and got a knife on that one, but if you look over here, this thing's barely even holding together, right? But if you go look at the plant itself, the plant's doing fantastic. And the, this this particular pumpkin takes about 110 days, so I'm not surprised. But you can see the, the blossoms coming out. You also see some of them cucumber beetles. I'm gonna have to kill them. them striped bugs there. But again, this plant was hit by a squash and board, but it looks like it's doing pretty good still. Hey, we can continue to have some good success with our squash. I'm showing it here. Um, I got some summer squash that I've been able to harvest. Even with the squash vine borers being all over the place. So to be smart, what we want to do is think about planting some winter squash, especially the uh, uh, Muchata family. They have a harder vine, and it's harder for the squash vine borer to get in. And I showed you out there, though. I mean, the heat, they were able to get in in some cases. But they're surviving. They're still growing. They're thriving. We've got new fruit coming on. The most important point, even the ones that you could tell there was some fresh, you could tell he got in, the squash vine board got in. He didn't completely damage the plant. In some cases, the vine is so thick that they can't even really push all the way through. They can get in, but then they just they just die in the vine. The other point is a lot of these, uh, like the Dickinson pumpkin, that kind of vine, it goes and sets itself and roots back in the ground every five, seven foot, eight foot, something like that. So you could you could actually cut off the original root, and that sucker's going to still do pretty good. So try that out i think it's a good alternative there's some other things we can do to try to avoid squash vine borer especially with summer squash but try that out you can uh, help extend your squash season the other thing to look for is we're going to look late in the season as well we're going to go and do some succession planting and then some to try to get it in mid mid july to try to get it in before the first frost and we can go ahead and get a harvest possibly on the back end of this uh, summer fall 
All right, so this is what we got to harvest. There's a bunch coming out there. The pump, uh, Dickinson's pumpkin, there's like four of them. They're not ready. There's some of the butternuts that are not ready. These are four big uh, green bush zucchinis. This is the uh, Zucchino Rapacante. These two big ones. Tokyo Green, uh, Tawani Tokyo Green cucumbers. They're really nice. This is some homemade pickle uh, type of uh, cucumbers. These are some amarillo and some snow white carrots. These are some butternuts. I went ahead and took the, the, the uh, plant that it was on. Just looked like it was not going to make it, so I thought I'd just go ahead and pull those. They're small. We'll let them cure for a little bit, and they'll, we'll eat them. Those are your Thai long beans. That's just a bonus. And some Bertali beans. Again, just a bonus. I'm cooking some up for my dad, so I just pulled them while I was out here. And that's a cool Robbie. It's a little UFO guy that sits out of the... He's in the soil, and he comes out like that. Pretty wild looking. I just wanted to show you that as well. Now, hey, look, if you find this information valuable, do me a favor subscribe like that video feel free to share it feel free to put some comments and questions in the description down below garden on and i'll see you on the next video